The year is 2020, and with most of the population staying inside and spending a lot more time streaming content from home, 20th Century Fox thought it was the perfect time to release a movie that they had no faith in. This was David Pryor's The Empty Man. This movie is a movie best enjoyed blind. If you haven't seen it up until this point, I advise you to stop the video at this moment and just go watch it. It's time for Spooky of the Week! Happy Halloween! Yeah. If we played our cards right, we actually released- That is how you know that we are good boys or not, is if this episode dropped on Halloween. We didn't f up. The Empty Man, was, it was my recommendation. I had not seen it. I had heard the recommendation from a, a wide variety of people in the horror community. Kevin so, being an <laughs> avid member of the horror community. He is. He goes to he's all always, the meetings. He's always a, referencing the horror community. Yeah, like, he goes to the meetings and every day. Yeah. Well, they're a fascinating group of people. They're, they're, People's yeah, a strong word, but yes. If you want to be a part <laughs> of that group, you gotta watch all the like the crappy bad horror movies that like. Yeah, no, you gotta watch the crappy ones. See. You gotta watch the 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 franchise. Like, I just want to watch. You gotta watch the obscure ones. I just want to watch Halloween one and then not the other ones because they're bad. Yeah, see, see, that's that's the thing. Okay, you would Halloween you are not a bad. member. When do you become part of the horror community? Like, you know, as a card <laughs> as a card carrying member, dude. When when does that happen? There is a moment where you transcend and you know. <laughs> No, I hate to say it, 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 it is one well, of yeah, those I mean, things you just know. Think of Kevin, he watches the first of any horror franchise, yeah. and he decides, I do have to watch the rest of them. It's like, why would you ever I also that? decide, I haven't seen the I first one yet, I will watch all of them. I'm the complete opposite. I rarely, like, unless they all were like, everyone was like, oh no, they're all amazing. They're all amazing, you gotta see them all. Even then, I'm just like, S Sam Slade and I are in the same <laughs> boat on, I, I, I'm like, you're a, you're a half Kevin step below. Kevin swears. That's true. I have you, seen you, you will, you will the, cave, the, dude. The 13th movies. <laughs> Kevin swears the other Psycho movies are great. They are. I, and I, I won't I watch them. <laughs> it was produced by, uh, it was produced by, by 20th Century Fox. So it had like a studio backing. Yeah. And then they simply did not release it anywhere on it. It's not even straight to DVD. Yeah, they did. Like there was... is no physical copy of The Empty Man out there. It simply does not exist. That is bananas. So this movie was just completely swept under the rug. It's Max original. <laughs> That is uh, so weird, really? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. th this movie was not only like a cult film, but it like is super culty because like it's, it's like it was a race suck from being existence. the people that made it because it's like not not like the studio gave you nothing as far as marketing. Well, goes. Uh, David Pryor, the director, also didn't finish the editing. He, his comment is like, it's a rough cut. It's not even a a hundred percent finished movie in his eyes. Really? Interesting. The gist of it is that um, it's. It's hard to really describe, but it's it's uh, not Slender Man. <laughs> it's not Slender Man, so get that out of oh, your head. That, that is, That's what that, it sounds like. The, the, the That's what title, it sounds like. The title is both the most perfect title and the worst title at the same time. Like after you see the movie, you're like, oh no, that's a really no, good title. No, it, it's a great title. And I'm glad that it's called that. But, but at the same time, there's so many is, things like it. Yeah, it is nowadays. such a generic like, title, title that I think it hurts the movie because you hear someone saying they they watched the. I had to movie. ask what it was called like a million times. Oh, I, I, it's easy to forget one and like accidentally watch something else. Because if you heard both of those, right. like let's say Keegan, I was talking to you, and I wasn't super into horror movies, and you were trying to recommend it, it's like, oh, watch the Tall Man, or, or <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll watch the Empty Man, and then you go home and you're like, oh, I wanted to watch that movie. It was the something man. And I literally almost did that. Like I was watching it, and I was like, I'm not watching the right one, am I? This is what Kevin told me. If you see Jessica Biel, you're in the wrong place. And you mm. should see her pretty early. Oh, on I did. I watched the Jessica Biel one. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, it's about this entity that has a like a three day process where it kind of follows and and stalks you. And that's all we really want to say because really, it's just best to just, it, it's to, a, it's just a movie go in experience. It, it, it really is. Like yeah, just it's hard to really like, pin down. Just, like, just see it. Uh, just the plot. just know that I believe we all recommend it. Yes. So uh, so I would say if you like if if you are interested, yeah. definitely check it out. So we're gonna HBO. give you this five seconds. We're in spoiler time now. I had like a weird sort of intro to this movie. I walked into my own home and Keegan had found his way in uh, and he was watching The Empty well, Man. Well, Ke Keegan much like like an unwanted insect. Uh, <laughs> he, you can he just find just, him. He was like, just there on my couch on the wall. watching The Empty Man. Yeah. And he, he was like, I'm watching The Empty Man. Hanging and, from a web sometimes. And, <laughs> and I know Keegan and I know what he watches. So I hear The Empty Man, I'm like he's watching some crappy Slender Man <laughs> thing. But what I saw, I liked. And so I was like, I'm gonna, you know, going into it, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be Interesting movie. It's not going to be a normal Keegan recommendation movie. After I saw it, I actually did say this is right up your alley. Interesting. Um, I knew going in that the opening 20 minutes wasn't going to be what the movie was about. 
Because I, I didn't know anything except for that, that it has like a long introductory. Like, it's a short opens. movie as an introduction. Yes, yeah. it, it has a 20 minute long opening sequence that the reason I want you, I would have wanted you if you're, if you're, if you haven't seen it yet and you're still here, the reason I would have wanted you to go into it completely cold is I'm very interested to see what I would have thought if I didn't know that that was just the you're opening like, oh, sequence. Oh wait, where is this going? That's a completely different movie. Yeah, because I, I think I would have assumed that the movie is more about that like like it seems like that's the bite by that we were talking about it a lot because it's like when you start off a movie sometimes you have the cold a horror movie cold open where it's like ah, it's usually the one scare like two and ten minutes uh, yeah and the, the <laughs> characters the die i can go like a long one would be ten minutes a long one would be ten minutes like, like i like i think of the get like, out I, I think scream might even be less than that well and like get out has a, like a, a a minute or two yeah where it's just like okay it's a guy walking down hey he gets killed or he gets taken in that case if i didn't know that i i would i think i would have been really shocked that they all died i did not know about that 20 minute long opening scene all right all right they're taking their time i'm all good with that that's all cool 10 minutes go by and i'm like these are our protagonists uh, uh, I guess. and i'm like well the, these can't be our protagonists because we don't know a lot about them and i start telling you stuff about uh, and, and then they're like oh he was cutting his wrist and i'm just like i haven't looked up this movie i i, I, I don't know that james badge dale is the main character i didn't know that <laughs> how would you know that guy's name <laughs> It, to it, me, he's the guy in The Departed who yeah, no, gets shot like, by he, Matt Damon yeah, he, after he shoots yeah, no, that's the DiCaprio. That's it. That's that random cop. That's for. just like, we're all, we're all in the mob together. He's, he's like, like, cool, like, blam. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He's that guy. I actually made a note. It is 22 minutes long. 22 minutes long. Yep. At that point, I think maybe the longest opening for a horror I'd ever seen was like maybe the Friday the 13th remake, which I don't know how long it actually is, or, but it or, felt like 15 minutes. Depending on how it's like, really long. What counts as an opening, <laughs> uh, um, Psycho. When does it stop being a cold open and become just like a part of the movie? <laughs> well, because you're following what is allegedly the main characters. So if you follow them for half of the movie, I would say that's a yeah. story shift. Yeah. yeah. But if it's, I would say if it's within the first third to a quarter of the movie. I, I think I'd have to watch the, the movie again before I could really solidify if I think this is a criticism, but I think that opening sequence could have been shorter. Because I actually totally disagree. Well, that, I, 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 that, I don't think so. That's why I'm saying this could change or like be more true or less true on a second rewatch, but like knowing, just knowing the rest of the plot, <laughs> I'm like, like just fresh out of it. I'm like, how necessary was all of that time there? Like honestly, like without any exposition and hardly any dialogue, it it, it, it lays the groundwork for everything you need to know about the main, like the monster, about what it, 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 what, it tells what it's you about. How like, everything without, works. Yeah, without someone saying, you know what happens when this, I mean, no offense to The Ring, which is a great movie, but in The Ring, they kind of do that a little bit because they, they there's a lot of information to dump on you. They're like, oh yeah, there's this videotape, it's this curse thing. And the movie does have a scene like that, but it, 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 it already takes place after you have visually seen the effects of what it could possibly be. It's more of a reminder <laughs> than an, an information. Yeah, it, it's a reminder. It's like, well, we're not in a different place in a different setting, so we kind of need to remind you what it is now. But it still visually showed it to you first, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. A lot of movies don't like think of that. And, and that that re it really s like sets up <laughs> a character that ends up being very important. <laughs> very important, yeah, too. So it's not, it, it, it's not just a wasted about uh, that proof guy. of concept scene, I, too. I was looking at it and I was like, that guy kind of looks like Aaron Paul. Like, he kind of looks like a discount Aaron Paul. And this is the, literally the only note I put for this movie because I made fun of you guys for making notes, but I put this as a note because I looked up that guy's name. His name is Aaron Poole. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, is this a joke? Does that guy, is this guy like literally like faking his way onto sets? Cause they're like, oh yeah, we got Aaron Paul for this movie. Yeah, 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 you did. You did. <laughs> you did. Aaron, I'm Aaron, Aaron Paul. Paul. Aaron Poole. Aaron Poole. Aaron Poole. Yeah, I'm Aaron Poole. I thought this movie was awesome. And honestly, it's, it's just one of those, those movies that while I was watching it, I was like, oh my gosh. I can sense that there's so much that I'm missing already. Yeah that I know I'm just gonna pick up way more on a second watch. It's kind of how I felt watching like It Follows. It was like you watch and you're like, there are things I missed. I, I just, I feel it. Yeah. I know there is. I know when I go back, there's gonna mm -hmm. be something waiting for me when I go back. I'm gonna make connections. I'm gonna dot, connect wait, the dots. Wait, the ending has you completely <laughs> rethinking most of the scenes of the movie. It's like, and wait, a, lo was a lot that of them intentional? Did, yeah, like, a lot of them did come to me like after that, I was just like, that scene, that scene. Yeah. You're like, Oh my gosh, I'll bet that was intentional because of this. I just, if I rewatched that, I would know. I also like loved it. I, I think that it is a much smarter movie than it seems like it would be on the surface. That it felt like a movie that could have slash almost should have been released in the mid seventies. On the surface, it's a like spooky, 
uh, Candyman esque. Like there's a demon monster that if you if you say his name or whatever and, and you blow into a bottle, uh, he he will come and kill you by by making you kill yourself. That is one layer of it. Another layer is it's like this almost noirish detective story about this guy looking for a, a girl that's been um, you know, that that's been might, might kidnapped been or ran away with this and, cult. and has gotten involved with this cult. To me, that's where the movie starts to become super unique. Is both of those premises on their own? It's like I've seen that before. I've seen that before, and then they combine them <laughs> in a way where they're both relevant. They're both like you know they're interwoven. Um, and they're both done well to where I'm not like lacking like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cult, it doesn't steal from one to pay the other. Yeah, part, the, part of the mystery is you sitting there like wh- how are these connected? Like why did I have one feeling with this mysticism here and then now I'm kind of like it's a I have this other something. feeling with this. Why am <laughs> yeah. I yeah worried about this cult? There, there is some comedy. In, in at <laughs> least I felt like with the, no no no. There, there, there's definitely little tiny moments I was like. <laughs> Well, like yeah, how many how funny. many times he repeats that, that I, I grew up in San Francisco. Yeah, that, no, that, yeah, I cannot no, I believe he kept saying that. that, yeah, that I, I grew up in San Francisco. That is a joke that at the end of the movie you you have a completely different take on that. Yes, joke. the yeah, characters talk like they're all in a, a like a 1940s movie. Like a lot of the other characters, and that ends yeah, up being uh, relevant more or less. I was like writing down weird line deliveries. And I was like, that was delivered kind of weird. I don't know if that was good. That was delivered kind of weird. I don't know if I like that. Um, and then after the twist happened, I was like, was that intentional? Because those characters were acting, like they, the characters were acting, and so they were not delivering their lines convincingly yeah, because they like, didn't oh have to be. Gosh. Like, w- was that intentional? My mind's just like blowing thinking back. Cause like, yeah. there are actors that are good in some scenes, um, but then in these scenes where it could easily be an intentional like choice to have them be speaking weird. Yeah, it's it's odd and weird, like um, kind of offbeat. Kinda th- like there's a there's guy. a there's a there's a pretty significant change. Like uh, the the example I I'll, I'll use is the uh, is the weird face guy that gets punched. Once mm. he gets punched and like or what once That's he. Dark. Um, what? That is that Ned Stark? You are full of ass. No, that's 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 kid Ned Stark. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You are full of ass, really? Oh yeah. my gosh, that's him. That is him. I had to he look it up. I was like, I, was, I looked it up actually when he was watching at my place a while ago. I was he does like, play younger people? I was like, <laughs> I see that guy, <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, I, I, I literally said, I'm, I'm, I'm like. He plays younger people. <laughs> yeah, and I, he looks like he looks like he could have been like a uh, solo like, or whatever. Yeah, you know? that's what I said earlier. That's he looks like said. him. Like he looks. <laughs> you guys, you guys, he he would have been better. He, he be would have been better. Dick sucking after the cameras. Get it's, oh yeah. Cats, man. These cats are on another plane, man. You know, like far out on the outer rim. <laughs> Aren't you a little young for the Neil Cassidy routine? Who's that man? So that character, the first time you meet him, he's talking a very specific way. Um, and it's very, like he even, the, the main character even makes fun of him for like sounding like a, 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 a guy, like he makes oh, yeah. a specific reference, like, oh, you're too young to act like this person. He's like, who's mm-hmm. that? I'm we're too, all, then I'm, we're all too young to know who that yeah, is. Yeah, I'm too young to understand that. I'll, I'll edit in that that <laughs> sequence, but he's talking very weird, like almost like it's scripted, but I'll, then- I'll pretend like I don't wh- know Once the, the protagonist, um, like he, he pulls him off the street and, and beats him up, he talks completely different and mm-hmm. like his mannerisms are completely <laughs> different than the first time. Well, you got that. pepper sprayed. You got pepper well, sprayed. Also, I mean, also that'll, he, that'll change your f-ing tune, dude. Also, he's not playing that act, that character in the movie was playing a specific well, that, role. That's what, that's what I'm saying. And so that idea has me thinking, like, how many times throughout the movie was that happening to the protagonist? And the answer is probably way probably more of them, <laughs> way way more than you than you than you think. In that first scene with the girl who joins the cult, you're like, this conversation has a completely different subtext. There is a completely different conversation that is going over the main character's head. Yes. That that's one of those things in there that it was hurt that I saw that chunk of the movie because I was sitting there watching that conversation. I was like, she's involved in a cult. Yeah, the way she's I, talking. I, yeah, yeah, for us, but we were like, like, man, I she is speaking even, strange. I didn't even know. Yeah, I honestly, I thought it was an acting. Like, I literally wrote it that that first conversation where I was like, oh my God, is the acting just going to be like this the entire movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, that's the whole thing, time. dude. I didn't even know it was about a cult. So like that, that's mm-hmm. one of the... W- w- yeah, definitely why, go into this movie blind. W- w- at the time when you're watching it, you're completely wrapped up in this mm-hmm. movie. Didn't you used to be a cop? Yes, I did, St. Louis. Undercover, right? Yeah, I remember hearing about you. She came to see you yesterday. I have 
almost no complaints outside of it possibly could have been shorter, but even that's just like, a, I have to say that because it's two hours. I, I wish that the movie had been made in the 70s because while I was watching it, I was I was like- They could have made it look more 70s. Well, th that's the thing. It looks very, and I think this detracts from the overall experience I have with the movie. It looks very clean and modern. I was yeah, like, I, I wanted the movie- That's probably one of my problems that I didn't like the look of it. No. Yeah. If it had been shot on film or like they had just processed the, the digital- Or, or if it just thing. like, if just they use dingier sort of sets for the most part. Like they use Panavision C series lenses, which looked really good. The <laughs> lenses were great. Um, the way they color graded everything was just a little too like generic modern horror movie for me. Um, or if it was just but, raining in every scene, just something that made it look or feel dingier. That's like a stupid nitpick. Like that. That's almost not even. Well, I'm not saying it should be. I'm just saying like yeah. something to make you feel. Like, it, it felt clean, like what Alex yeah. was saying. I wish it was more like that, but I can understand why it's not. You know, not everybody likes, and especially a lot, like a lot of non-movie fans don't like things, like they like the more modern stuff. They want things to feel slick and clean. I like the ending and I like the twist a lot, but once it happened, I wanted like one more scene. I wanted like one thing where it's like, okay. That's actually a big problem <laughs> for me. I would say, okay, he's the empty man now. He's. Like he is the vessel for the, for for the he's the antenna for them, and it's like so now this cult lives on. And it's like, but what does that mean? No, though? yeah, that's like, my like, problem like, with the ending. Like, what is the implications on us, like the normal people? All I would need is just one scene of either the cult just be like, all right, now go out and make it happen, or something, and the cult just all leaves and they all go to different cities and something. You're just like, oh my gosh, like just something to be like, yeah, now like that this has happened. This is the effect that it's going to lead to and then ended there. I think that just a little bit more. Especially since you don't really have a ton of that in the movie. Like yeah. what the Empty Man does. There is one scene where they establish it and it's just mentioned once and they need to have another scene later on where he's investigating more of the same. Where he's sitting down with the police chief and the police chief goes, there's a woman who fed her infant child to a pack of wild dogs claiming that the baby was whispering to her and saying the empty man made her do it. That is the only scene where they establish that it's yeah. spreading and they need another scene later on where the main character is looking at newspaper clippings or headlines of articles and researching well, and well, finding... Yeah. Or just as the or, credits or, are rolling, just have like newspaper, newspaper articles yeah, that, that, that just popping slowly up. fade and it's just it's just like, it's like man eats his own head, says the empty man maybe, and you're just like, oh my God, what? Something of that nature where it's like, yeah. it's showing newspaper clippings, there gonna be like little short videos of like horrible things happening. Now, for a lot of movies, I generally don't always need something like that, but I felt like for this movie, I was like, oh, I felt like the effect could be really interesting and unique. If they just touched on that one more time at the end, yes. I, I would have been, Totally sure wanted that because I I didn't feel like the twist for me was enough of a payoff because I was like okay cool you gave me the twist I get what's happening now what like now leave me with something else now, if, yeah it yeah, only yeah. left me with the twist and I kind of wasn't into that to to you know compare it to another uh, movie that we were just talking about um, it felt very much like I wanted it to leave me the way that Prince of Darkness leaves you feeling where at the end of that you, yes. yeah like you, it reveals everything and then it's like okay but this is this, this is, is the next kind of, yes step. this is why it matters that you know this is why it matters that you saw all that yeah yeah um, which so I don't feel that I, with I, that I have a separate not problem this is I sound like a broken record um, so I, I'm gonna compare this movie to a movie that a lot of people really like and uh, two movies actually, um, both Hereditary and Midsummer. But basically by the end of the movie, the protagonist has become the thing that the cult is yes, like. I it, also like that, am not usually into that. That is the twist is like, oh, you were, you, and I kind of saw this coming and I was really hoping that they didn't do this because th this is something I don't like about either of those movies is I I, I don't like that plot element. I It, or it just feels, my it, I, it, we've never done a review on Hereditary <laughs> Or Midsummer, um, but it, it's we did talk about it a little bit when we talked about Apostle because I really like like that. Movie, not every movie has to be an action movie, and that movie turns into an action movie. But I like I think that you it, just love it when movies turn into action. I movies I, I, I like that it it, it at <laughs> least is a different take on the cult thing where where he is the thing that the cult wants. Like that you know they're trying to turn him into whatever, and he fights <laughs> back, uh, and he never he never loses his agency where it is in Hereditary. Um, at a certain point, the main character literally just jumps out a window, and then from that point on, his agency is completely gone, 
Um, he, whatever he, whatever you were attached to the character doing, he's no longer like even in that universe anymore. He's just completely lost his agency, and because he loses his agency, I lose interest in following him. Because it's like, okay, he's gonna, he's just gonna, he becomes a zombie, and he just does whatever. I don't care what happens to him at this point. Yeah. Um, and this movie kind of does that at the very end. Um, I think, and this is my my big brave tweet is I think it does it better than either of Ari Esther's movies. Yeah, um, I would say so because yeah, I am a fan of Hereditary. He, but he, the the protagonist would, holds his agency till the very end. It is a trope I still don't like, and and I will never like it. Like it's How, it's however going to be is something. he even does he have agency even the entire movie? Though? But and, well, okay, I guess if we want to go into full spoilers, then yeah, that that's that is possibly the biggest reason I give it a pass is because his agency is a big theme in the movie. Yeah. A problem with this movie for me is my well was definitely poisoned watching that chunk of the movie I saw. I liked the chunk that I saw, and so I was kind of waiting and like piecing together in my head what I saw already. I'm you saw like, one of the best scenes. In yeah. The movie. Well, I, not only that, but you. I saw a, like a chunk of the movie that reveals a whole bunch of things. So I'm already kind of ahead of the movie when I'm watching it. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, okay, so that's what's going on. And then so I kind of, there was, I really liked the opening. There's stuff I like going through there, but I kept losing it. Like I, I would lose myself in it because I would- Because you know where it's going. Because I know where it's going. And yeah. I like when he goes up and finds the cult and all that. Uh, I pretty much watched from when he first goes and sees, uh, what's his name, Fuchs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fuchs. <laughs> and then watched all the way up until he was beating up Ned Stark. Oh, wow. Well, so you watched a big chunk exactly. of the movie. I watched a big chunk of the movie and that hurt my viewing experience of it. I don't dislike the movie, but I, I saw more of its flaws, I guess, yeah. for me. Like I was sitting there looking at it like, okay, so it's it's this. And like I, I there was stuff in there that like, like for me, the, um, the empty man folktale thing, I was just like, get, get that out of here. Like, we're not talking about this. Like, cause I already knew kind of where the movie was going. And I don't think that, that those two themes mix together well for me. Like, I think I, I'm like, okay, it's either that or it's the cult thing. I like the cult stuff, but the empty man thing kind of just, it falls flat for me. To me, the way I read it was the folktale became into existence because of, you know, it's it's all his, like what they, basically like what the ending reveals yeah. is like he's telepathically or whatever putting out this, this he's projecting the empty man. And so it became part of folktale in that area because of that. He broadcasts, we receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He transmits, we receive. Uh, and so. Thoughts are just yeah, also, suddenly also, planted I think in you're, you're totally, you're totally like, Part of what what is interesting about it is the mystery part of it because yes. that is how it starts. Like, I, I think you completely completely. It's like, well, what's with the fucking red herrings? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh no, you need those. Yeah, yeah. It, it, what, when you're watching it naturally, it's like, oh yeah, it feels like it, it is the most important part because it's where the story kicks off. Like that is the first thing. Yeah, for for me watching it with the mystery elements of it, I was still wrapped up in the mystery, but I felt like a lot of points in the movie when it was like drip feeding you the stuff to keep you interested, like, oh, so he's figuring stuff out. I, I kept feeling like he wasn't figuring stuff out. I kept feeling like he's kind of just still learning the same thing. He's not, he, until like the very end, he's not really learning anything. You know, like it's mostly like he, He's well, he, he's just looking for clues on where she is. Like, yeah, and so that's and then so he finds all this other information that he doesn't know what to do with. It's like okay, there's this the legend scene thing, where he shows up where the cult's behind, that. like all around that fire and everything is great. And it's also <laughs> the first scene where he starts like like his character starts kind of being affected because yeah. he's like this cool dude, like nothing yeah, bothers yeah, him. yeah, nothing. Really I've seen bothers everything. Him. I'm looking at a dead. Once dog he sees that, he's like that is. And then once fuck. They, he's just you like, no, fuck that. I'm leaving. And then that was whack. He's literally thinking the same thing any audience member would be thinking is like after oh, that entire fuck. scene he's driving oh. away he's just like what the fuck was that oh yeah no <laughs> I, I literally I literally wrote that that down in my notes uh, was, that was, that that was, was a great, great genuine oh, yeah, no, human that, reaction like, where he's like what the fuck was that? that what the fuck was that that's what gets you wrapped up in that movie that he's this normal like cash detective dude and now now it's clear that this is beyond his his so, so like, his I realm said, of I said uh, earlier that he's a very belief. generic looking white dude. That that guy fucking killed it. I think he was like the anchor, one of the. Oh yeah, no, he does a good movie. job. He does a really good yeah, job. Yeah, he, he did at, great. Good job, some, guy in Departed who shoots Matt Damon. Especially in the like, I, I didn't even. Or Matt this, Damon but, shoots. Uh, but at the. Who <laughs> says shoots Matt Damon? Yeah, Matt Damon does yeah. shoot. Well, <laughs> generic white. Oh, generic white guy does shoot Matt Damon. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a popular generic white dude. Yeah, he's he's that classic <laughs> damaged ex cop with a dramatic past. Something had. Yeah, like he's, he he's just he's just a simple guy, yeah. and then she's just like, oh, did you know that like nothing matters and nothing's 
Israel, he's just like, I don't know what you're saying. Oh my but god, it's just, I it's, didn't even think they were fucking with him the entire time. Yeah. So, so Alec, I will get into yeah, that yeah, 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 oh yeah, 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 no, she, yeah, she went in They're swinging from that him. first moment. Small note, uh, that, that girl was just Will from Stranger Things. Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Put them side by side. Put, Put them, them side by side right yeah, now. You can't. This is my second time watching it. And knowing the final twist, it recontextualizes the entire movie. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's so, a lot in there that you're just oh, going, oh, oh, yeah. Like, from the first scene of the movie, like, there's that amazing uh, cave demon statue. That fucking like, weird is an alien skeleton. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? I, what the I, fuck I, was I, that? I just love that one brief That's consciousness, just, dude. So oh, this movie's a low-key sci-fi movie? It's not an alien. It's the empty man. It's consciousness, dude. I, 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 it's kind of, it's, it's it's almost it's, like a it's, life it's, is a simulation it, it, thing. It's, it's, it's more it, Lovecraftian. It's the way I read it was, it's, it's existential. not necessarily supposed to be an alien, but it's just a being not from our world is the way I read it. That's why there's a focus on like the stars. I can, I can, on the back of that cult thing, they had the word tulpa. Mm -hmm. Hindu mysticism. The first viewing, I'm like, oh, this is what the empty man is. People had thought exercises and their negative thoughts came together and made something. It made an evil spirit, the empty man, who's trying to get into our world and yeah, drives people crazy. Yeah, well, yeah, when that happened, I was like, oh, that's probably what the empty man is. Like, he's, And he's then you watch the movie again, and you're like, nope, <laughs> that's, that's something else. <laughs> what the empty man is, is he is mimetic entity or like a psychic entity. He is this idea that is kind of alive. He has a hard time connecting to humans because he's this alien idea. Mm -hmm. And he can only connect to people who are broken. They're like, have had a tragic life happen to them. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. once he gets in, he can start influencing the world through them, spreading the idea that he is made out of because it feeds him. There's more of that idea of the empty man, which means he becomes larger. If that makes sense, yeah. The more ideas spread, spreads, he spreads like that a mental disease. Is. Yeah. So that's why they're like, oh, he he is like a disease. Like if you're able to describe your god as a disease, don't don't worship him. Then pick a different um, one. It's a disease you can't you don't choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, that as a concept is something I've already like just in in life. I'm super interested in. It's like an, it's a thing that pe like a like the matrix simulation type of thing. That's just an interesting thought where it's like our thoughts connected in a way that we can't see like is, yeah. is there some sort of energy that mankind hasn't figured out yet that like, causes deja vu and like you know thoughts being like transmitted because well, everyone's other. had a deja it's i i, I kind of laugh when they're explaining it to the main character uh because they're like have you ever had deja vu or, or a bad dream ever every bad dream you've ever had is just a documentary bro um because like <laughs> that, i, I kind of laughed at that line but at the same time everyone's had that thought where it's like what the our deja vu is like oh yeah no like in my head it seems like it's a thing that just we haven't tapped yet everybody is affected by gravity but nobody figured out gravity till you know somebody figured it out I, i've had too many deja vus in my life where it's like oh i am experienced like i've literally i can predict what's going to happen in the next yes. five seconds because i like i feel like i've already lived i'm having a memory of this happening already which yeah i mean and the, 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 here's the crazy thing a lot of the the terminology that they were using uh, like like the the Noah sphere and all, all those so it's like all, all like all of those are like terms that people use yeah for for these theoretical things so it's like it's interesting that they took a lot like they did their homework well that's why I said uh, uh, like it's a smarter it's, movie it's than a, you it's would a much smarter it movie and it really and, and, and for anyone that doesn't know any of that it might sound like mumbo jumbo it totally is not well, yeah, and it's like it, it could it could be I, it, I, or anytime you're listening you, you have a song in your head and then it pops up on the radio think yeah. little things like yeah, that that just seem like so you know Keegan thinks all of this is horse shit. Humans are really bad at statistics. The I also think this is all stupid part of me is like, no, yeah, we, we are also like, we, you remember the times that happens because it doesn't happen like a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And then like the one time it does, you're like, oh my God, that happens. And even if it only happens like <laughs> twice a year. I completely agree with that, except for deja vu. That stuff's weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. Just, you did not weird. experience it. You've never been there, and now you're here. And you, a certain you deja have, vu, you especially, you're just like, what the no. heck was that? I literally, <laughs> I, that has definitely happened. This is just a scene that I absolutely loved. He is looking at the map, and it starts zooming in on the map, oh, and yeah. it oh, transitions that was into a an overhead. Ass.
I'm really curious to how they did that shot. I think it's a fully CG shot. It yeah, has no, it, to be. it is. Because uh, I, it was one of the things I saw when he was watching at my place, and I was, we, we were all like, "Holy crap! How'd they do that?" And I was like, "Oh, it's like it's a it's a 3D stitch. Like the yeah, they, they just took the map and then they made that into the map. And the car is actually CG until it isn't. Like you can actually see a moment when it becomes not CG. I think the entire shot is CG. You think? Well, but there's a point where the car. It almost changes to real. It makes sense that it would be all CG because it the car definitely looks CG for most of the shot. But there's a point in the shot where it looks like it goes from a sh CG shot to a mounted uh, tracking shot. Like yeah. it, it looks like the camera yeah, yeah. landed See, on the ground well, and was he, going. Here, here's what I think. I think that that happened. And they did it on purpose to this, make it. No, no, the siege, the car is still CG though. I, Cause I agree with you. There is a part mm. where it looks like it becomes a mounted car shot, but I think the entire, the car is CG the entire time. Yeah, that's possible. Because there's never yeah. a pop in where the car like looks like it's CG and then the car starts being fake. But the ground around it does. Like there's a certain there's definitely a point where it reaches the ground. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Now I feel like I'm looking at real gravel. Really good transition to like because the map is perfect. I don't know if that's a yeah. real place in in the real world. <laughs> but I, assume, I assume it is a real place. Yeah. It is one of the most gorgeous scene transitions I've seen. In my well, life. And, and so that leads into the, the scene the, where the movie becomes like amazing. It, it is the masterpiece of this movie. The main character gets told by Ned Stark to go to this camp. You know, we get the scene where um, he he watches some, some V8. He's going through their files, like he's like, oh, I, I got the one up on them because I'm gonna find something in their files. And he finds a file with his name on it and he's like, oh, what is this? I got you. And he opens it, there's nothing in there. And he's like, you're fucking with me. This is fucked up. But uh, yeah, and from that point on, like after he stops watching the VHS uh, tape, it just, it gets bizarre, you know, that, in a way that you you kind of just have to experience. It's a really, really well crafted we, scene. We, yeah. we do not want to ruin anything in that scene. Yeah. Uh, storms are tied to the Empty Man. I don't know how that necessarily works because in the in the beginning it's a storm and it's slowly dying. Okay. In the end, it's a storm and it's slowly starting. One of the reasons I thought the Empty Man might be extraterrestrial in nature is because when he's being chased by the cult, there's a bunch of like lightning flashes, but they don't really look like lightning flashes. It's just like mm -hmm. kind of like Light lightning's flashing. exploding around him. And I was like, oh, is this supposed to be that it's not really, I didn't think it was like a UFO or anything, but I was like, it felt, <laughs> In that scene. Especially since he looks up at the stars in that yeah, scene, they're all yeah. spirally and stuff. Yeah. It, can, it doesn't even matter if it's from space or not. Yeah. The point is, is that it's this, from the f***ing cosmos, who knows, it's reality ripping uh, entity, and it's it's bigger than you and you don't matter. So like without fully going into science fiction, it could very well be science fiction like a lot of Lovecraftian things. Like it's just like, yeah. it's so weird and out there that it could be anything. Just to recap, um, I, I like protagonists having a lot of agency, and I also really like like, a lot of a lot of the good John Carpenter movies have uh, a vi like the, he 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 ends movies very similarly at least his good movies where the heroes might kind of win, but they're losing the grand like the, the you you win you win the battle. They're almost the always I don't care about my life. <laughs> These aliens. Yes, that's usually how it is. Yes. <laughs> that's li literally what they say half the time too. Yes, f this. <laughs> I'm killing this alien. I kind of wanted an ending like that. Like as the empty man was barfing into him, I was like, I really hope, like the the, mo the movie could have been really had a really really cool ending for me if if he just does something to be like, all right, this is this big cosmic and an entity. He's been bred to be the the new empty man, and he just says f it and like blows his own brains out or something like that, or has like. You know this this very I I you know I'm winning but I'm still losing kind of victory. Like instead of shooting the empty man at the end, he shoots himself. I don't even know if that because I, I that would have felt cheap too. So I don't know. Because go yeah no it's weird because then it would have just felt like video drama again. But yeah. It's like, oh okay. I I think that would have helped with the feeling that like you wanted to feel at the end of it where where if like you know maybe he was able to break free from it but he knows that it's out there now and it's just left with that like you know what I would say would be interesting is if he does try to do it like he thinks he still has agency at the last man and he kills himself but then he doesn't in his mind he just did. Yeah. And then the empty man just takes over. It's like, yeah, you can think that, okay. And then, and then turns out it's the gun late. that he fired killed the other guy, and then he or, took his or, place. Or, or yeah, like, something like, like that. Like, they, they they let him think that he won. <laughs> um, they, yeah, they or something like, like in, that. In through, yeah, they yeah that that could have been interesting, but. I don't know. I, but let's see. see it, I, I don't think he should have won necessarily because I do like the way it went. Yeah. Because it logically, there is no way he should have gotten out of it. So I think. The ending should have still happened. I just wanted a little more past that. I I, I agree with Kevin. I'm on the same page. Um, I only had two real complaints about the ending. 
One, I don't like how the Empty Man looked at the very end. I didn't like it when he was chasing him through the abandoned hallways, like when it started showing the Empty Man's face, and I'm like, that just looks like a dude in a, in a yeah. hood. Yeah. And then he grows the tentacle, and I'm like, okay, this is looking better. <laughs> so the movie really, I think, I know why Keegan thinks it's a movie that I would really like. But a problem with the movie I have is it's a movie I really like, but they kind of, a lot of modern things are thrown into it to like kind of keep modern audiences in, interested. And that's kind of how it feels for me. Where I, I wish less happened. <laughs> and let me explain. <laughs> Where And I think it goes with what I was saying with like, oh, we have this folktale thing and this cult thing. And for me, it doesn't mix. For me, it doesn't mix, especially because they have that whole like, after the cold open, they have like the opening, you're kind of figuring stuff out. You have like the kids, the teenagers killed off and everything. And then you have the, the kid that kills herself and stuff, like all that, where I'm like, ultimately by the end of it, I don't care about any of that. That, that stuff should have just been thrown out. Like, especially the, the girl just killing herself because she could have just been killed with, with the other ones in that. Even if I had already, if I saw it normal, like I, I would still be thinking the same thing. Cause I'm like, I like when they get to the meat of it. I like that, but I don't care for like the, the like filler, it, it feels like filler. It just feels like, oh, this is too slow. We have to have more horrific scenes. Going well, on. I would say they need to know what the empty man can do, like what the effect of it is, because we don't get but a lot I, of that. No, at but the you end. get that from the kids being dead under the bridge. Like that's totally enough for me. It's just like, oh, they 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 all got hung. They're like, like, what is up with that? That's spooky. Let's move on. And throughout it, they're sprinkling in um, his like his tragic past and stuff. I think they should have. They should have just given it to you at some point because they they give you enough to where when they give it to you at the end like the answer you already know like i didn't like w when it's like oh the whole empty man thing's coming after him and he's like flashing back to like the like they're giving you the whole picture well, of his i already know this is what happened you're not giving me any new information with this well so for me I, I i didn't take that as they're they're explaining what happened it's just like it's reminding you that that is what he thinks his past is and so now you like it's reminding you that so that you are now trying to rethink like what, who is this person actually? Cause that, that's a question I had when the movie was over. And so maybe, I, I don't but know see, I would, movie... I would be fine with that if they would have just had like a moment in the movie where you just had, you knew what happened to him. They piece it together throughout and you're like, I, I get it. He's got a tragic past. And then they, they show the whole thing is what, what's weird to me. So, so for me, this? it's that they show it at a weird point. They've already revealed his life as a lie by that point. Yeah. And then they show his tragic past. Exactly. One of the questions that I wish the movie had answered more is that, okay, that's not his real past. Who is he? Is he just a homeless guy that they found on no, the- No, no. He was created completely out of nothingness. <laughs> like, like- Yeah, he's like, he's just formed. No, he, the, the, it is yeah, explicit. They explicitly tell you. Yeah, they is, say is, he was born three days ago. I, I thought they, that was like a mental- No, like no, he they, was, they create- So that that's was- That's why they had the pictures and everything. Yeah, that's, that's why, like that file, because it was they all fake. literally fixed. used all of that to create an entire person with a history that they made. That's you know why he keeps mentioning the San Francisco. Funny with that mm. is that uh, if you look back, there's the picture where he took with that couple, with the dead husband and the ch chick he banged. Yeah. Um, it, it's so clearly photoshopped. In my head, I was like, oh, they just photoshopped it for the movie because they had to get those actors together. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's just photoshopped because they photoshopped it. <laughs> This ties yeah, into, I think, all of the complaints we had is, my understanding is David Pryor only had a rough edit of the movie. Like, a, a yes, mostly finished I think, edit. I think it could be combed better. Like, I think there is it's, stuff in there that, the ending. it feels like studio interference almost, where they looked at it and they're like, this is too slow <laughs> and like. Yeah. Studio basically looked at it and wasn't confident. So that's why they didn't do any marketing. And then either. after that, they didn't, they just pulled it all together. And it had bad critical reviews too. With a different studio, I feel like it could have, like if, if this was yes. a movie being released by like, you know, actual horror. But like, like, yeah, like a movie that I, that it feels reminds me of original. Don't Look Now. If it was a Shutter original, it'd be all over the Literally place. Literally nothing yeah. happens in Don't Look Now till the end. You know, it's yeah, not no, saying that this is what this movie should do. I'm just saying this movie could have been brave enough to do that. It would have worked <laughs> totally fine without the added elements that I feel like the movie, for me, it was yeah. weighing it down. I, I was like, I don't need, I just give me the mystery. Just give me, let, let me go with this character and like figure out what's going on with this cult. I don't How need this. They create a I don't person. Need this they, 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 <laughs> through consciousness, they, they literally explain that at the beginning of the movie when they talk about the Tulpa and she even explains it again later. What, what do they say about creating people? Concentration plus effort plus thought equals, equals flesh. That creates people? So it's, it creates flesh. The empty man, through him, they learned how to create a vessel because he, like, cause, cause this he, is, this is, by the way, yeah, this so, is just, so wait, hold, all right, I, I guess this is, this is my, my fucking problem with it. Or not problem, but like what, what I, what I'm hung up because they explain that it needs to have trauma. Like if they can do all this, why does it have to have rules on top of that? So the empty man as a concept is a horrible, miserable concept. 
Because remember, it's a living concept, right? Right. So it can only empty someone who is horrible and miserable and empty on the inside. So, but all right, I, I guess to more. more <laughs> which, is why, what, why, which is why they picked the guy at the beginning who um, why was did suicidal. They, why did they have to throw him through this ringer? Why couldn't they just give him like a sad pat? Why did they have to like throw him into this mystery? <laughs> he need, no, he, because, he, he, because he needs to believe that his life was real. Because he, that's where the sadness and the emptiness comes. Because, He's reacting to because, the past that they gave. So they, going back to my question, why can't they just program someone who's pre-sad enough to do all this and they, they just because want to do you it? Still, because you, you can still, just create a person. I, I don't they know. They did. They did. And so well, I think a, that is what they did. Here, no, I know, but why Like, why do they then Why do they then need to set up? Why, why can't they just, pro, if they can program a person this much, why can't they program him to just do all this stuff? I don't, I don't know. The fact that they can cr- just create people kind so, of hurts it a little bit for me. So <laughs> is it is it st- like he completely was just formed that yes. day. Yes. That, that's why it's stupid. Like, that's why it's a little stupid. He was for me imagined into existence. The, what, what I thought it was is that they took a pre-existing human and then just like brainwashed no. him. Because the, the other thing is, and that's at the end. This is why he can become the perfect vessel. Is because he has to realize that he is not a real person. No one remembers him. That's why when he calls the um, the woman yeah. he had the affair with and yeah. she doesn't know who yeah. he is. It leaves him completely empty on the side, breaks him completely, making him the perfect host. He has right. to have <laughs> believed. Yeah, he's if, a person, if, it's, if it's somebody so that has a life, I, I'm, I'm then gonna, they, they'll always look back on those marriages and be like, no, you know me, right? Yeah, of course I know you. Like, they can't fake that. Mm-hmm. So, so they can so fake th- someone's that entire actually, life. That story. actually I, uh, that, that breeds a new criticism then. The fact that they literally created a human hurts the movie a little bit for me. I, I think that is too. It's too woo woo in a movie about. Oh, it. Yeah, I don't think so, dude. Just, I, just because like they set up Topol from the beginning, I knew what that was. They, they, and then when they revealed it was him, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense because they, everyone's they, acting weird. It's very movie esque. Yeah, like, I, everything seems kind of scripted and it feels weird. They could have. It just it, it degrounds <laughs> the movie. Like it, it takes it takes the the. It also kind of feels like what they're setting up. Like they could still have that twist and have it be a real person because that's they, I, it that's could be that they, they were just gonna was. look for the perfect vessel. Yeah, that's literally what I thought it was. I thought. They created him by like brainwash. I thought it was more of like a Bioshock thing without the clone. I, I, I mean, they, they I mean to, pretty, to, to be were... fair, it is a Bioshock thing. The last thing I, I want to say was just how often the same iconography would pop up. Mm-hmm. That's what I was like, talking about with Storms. Yeah, like, or like, 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 <laughs> like, like how, like, the, I think the first thing you ever see of it is you, is you see the skeleton and it's got like, it's, it's sitting there like this and it's got all the bones like going up like that and you're like, oh, that's weird. But then, and then later he goes into a room and he sees the poster, which is just a straight black poster with nothing on it. And then the, in the corner, there's just a person sitting with lines going out that way in your head. You're like, that's weird. And then, you know, and then you see, and then you see the, the guy in the videotape, right? Who's like, I'm just going to use my insights to just paint this picture on the wall. And then it's a, of a guy sitting there like this with lines, with the blood, blood coming out of his head. And then he kills the guy at the end, who's a guy laying there with the thing coming out of his head. When he's at the hospital, when he first arrived at the very end, he crosses his fingers like this and it's centered on his fingers. And I'm like, I'm like, there's probably more I'm not even catching. Final thoughts? Final thoughts. <laughs> that, that, the fact that they created him, I, I'm not joking, ruins a, a solid portion of the movie for me. I, again, I'll go back to like, it's just too, for a movie that is mostly relatively grounded and has some spiritual and uh, some like woo woo aspects, I literally creating a human is just a little out there. I know I'm like, it probably seems like I'm harping on that, but it's just a weird, like, I, I thought no, it was. I get your criticism. I. It just, it's like, well, you I'd can probably just like cre- it more if it wasn't just a creative so, so, person. To me, to me, it's just like, you can create a, per- like, if, if, like, why, 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 why am I going through all this if it's just a creative person? If you, if you can mold them to be whatever you want, why can't you just already, like, they're pre made perfect? Because like, it's the plot very, doesn't need to happen. They, they, I, I think that's part of the plot has to happen, to happen for them though. to form it. But uh, that's what, why? That, like, that's why creating a person <laughs> ruins it. Like, why does the plot need to happen? Why can't you just create a person that's already like that? That's already a perfect vessel. Like, they did. Because the, it's the a, empty it's man a person still has needs... to find them, so they had to blow into the bottle, and so... Just have them want to... Like, just... dis- true despair comes from hope. Yes. Yeah, you, I, can't, you can't just be processed that way. Like you and, have to believe and for you can me, get accomplished. For me, that would work better it if it wasn't a person that was literally <laughs> created. Like, it just, I think it just completely... It's... It hurts it for me. Uh, the final thoughts, uh, I thought the movie was sweet. I, I gave it like, uh, uh, the, he pointed out before we started, he's like, I noticed you gave it a four out of five on Letterboxd. And I, and, I, and I was like, I did. I'm thinking of giving it a four and a half. I said, because I really did enjoy it a lot. It's a smart movie. Those scary moments are very scary to me. Um, 
and uh, I honestly cannot wait to rewatch it. I hope to rewatch it maybe before the end of the year. It is super interesting. I would recommend. Yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty fun time. I've got problems with it clearly, and um, I'd recommend watching it in order, uh, the way it was intended. <laughs> uh, we all would. <laughs> it's definitely something that people should check out more. Movies. I want movies to strive more to be like this. I don't like the elements that feel like the other movies I've seen nowadays. You know, I like the stuff that feels n- new and fresh and unique. All the slow, you know, creepy elements of it, I really enjoy. So I mean, it's on HBO Max. Just go go check yeah. it out. You know, uh, final thoughts, perfect. like Kevin, I also gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Letterboxd, and after rewatching, I was like, I should bump it up to 4.5. <laughs> it is even better rewatching it. I, I, I think I might have given it like a 4. It, it is down to like 3.5. Uh, I'd that, probably that, give it a 3. I, I, I honestly, I wish that you didn't tell me, because it, it, I, if I just went on believing that it was just a brainwashed homeless person, the movie would be better to me. But yeah, I still recommend it. Uh, if, if creating humans doesn't bother you, it's just too, that's too stupid of a con, like, that they can just create a human, like, what, what, why? What, like, it's just so. It's kind of like, which one's the one where it's a time loop thing with, uh, what's his face? Yeah, predestination. 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 It's like that, where I'm kind of like, why are we doing this, guys? You, you are completely I mean? wrong about that movie, by the way. That movie's a f***ing ape. But I, I'm just like, wait, hold on, so you can create people. That is such a stupid, I, we can end the video now. Okay. That is just such a stupid concept to me. I, I'm sorry, that's a stupid concept. That, that's a stupid concept in a smart movie. I, Bioshock's a bad example because they literally create him too, but at least he's a clone. <laughs> that, that game That game already set up that there's like science that can create clones. And you could argue that the movie sets up magic that can create clones, but yeah, I, I think magic it, it is does. stupid. Like, magic is a stupid thing. Dude, they are fighting. No, in, magic is stupid. In a horror movie. No, yeah, and that's fine. I'm Magic is stupid. Like, literal no, magic. Psychic demon, literal dude, magic. Has that's magic. fine. Yeah, magic. They, they've established that there are psychic energies. Psychic, psychic demon is fine. They affect the world. Yeah. Why is, someone, why is him teaching them how to that's, do a specific thing? That's, that's so it's, it's creating something physical. Like, it goes from being psychic brain waves to uh, that can now create something that's physical is where it loses me. They, they well, that's the thing. I don't care if they establish it. I'm saying it's stupid. They, they set it up to where that's what you think the empty man is because that's what you think. Oh, that's why they set up the tulpa because it's obviously something that... Was- I don't know what a fucking tulpa is. You keep saying tulpa. They explain it. I don't give a fuck what a tulpa oh, is. I don't care what a tulpa is. I don't give a fucking stupid. Well, I don't care what a fucking clone is. Oh, oh, oh. How do they know how to clone? You know what a clone is and they told you. They said they fucking use science. I'm just saying, dude... <laughs> You cannot compare, dude. I'm sorry. You are completely incorrect. No, dude. I am not completely incorrect. Magic is stupid, and and Gandalf can eat a fucking dick. You cannot say that about Gandalf, (laughs) dude. Fuck this movie. This movie sucks. Don't fucking see it. (laughs) No, fuck you. I'm editing the video, and I'm I'm cutting out all your good points.